Hello, folks. This is Amos. Well, the other night, some of the boys had their weekly card game at the lodge hall. And it wasn't until about 12.30 that the game broke up. Hold it. <laughs> well, boys, it look like I is the big winner. Well, I cleaned out. Well, let's see here. Uh, I got three stacks of blue, four yellows, and two whites. And the way I figures, I wins the grand total of 36 cents. <laughs> Holy mackerel, it almost quarter to one. Oh, me, a quarter to one? And I told the battle axe I'd be home by 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, honey, I was just out playing cards with the boys. This is a fine hour to be coming home, one o'clock in the morning. Honey, I was just playing cards with Andy. It's always Andy. You just gonna have to stop seeing that no good Andy Brown. Now, wait a minute here. He's a bad influence on you, and you're just gonna have to stop seeing it. Stop seeing Andy? Friend of my cradle days? Are we just like brothers? He's my pal. We are buddies. Joy Stevens and Andy Brown ain't nothing. He's uncultured, he's a loafer, and he ain't got no background. Now, we, Andy ain't all that bad. He come from a nice family, too. Oh. Now, take that uh, rich uncle of his. That Uncle Percival. You mean that uncle he's always talking about? The one that lives down in South America someplace? Yeah, that's the one. He got a big coffee plantation down there. Uh, down there in Rio de uh, Geronimo. Well, this cause Andy's awfully successful. That don't make Andy no better. Well, he writes to Andy every once in a while, and he says someday he's gonna do something big for the boy. Yeah, something real big. I don't care if Andy's got 50 rich uncles all over the world. I want you to stop associating with him. As long as you hang out with that no good loafer, you'll never amount to nothing yourself. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's wrong with the kingfish. He's acting funny. I think for the past few days, he's been trying to avoid me. Oh, Andy, I think it's your imagination. The kingfish ain't the kind of fella that would... Uh... Hi. ready in a minute. By the way, George, is you done broke off with that Andy Brown yet? Now, wait a minute, honey. I agree with you that it's a thing to do, but it ain't gonna be the easiest thing in the world breaking off with Andy. It's like having your appendix out without an anesthetic. It's gonna hurt a little. It's more than a week ago that I spoke to you about it. Now, you better do something. All right, all right. Oh, me. I feel lower than a kangaroo in a pouch full of buckshot. Hi, Kingfish. Hi. I want to talk to you about something. Yeah, and I want to talk to you. Kingfish, you've been acting kind of funny here lately, and I want to know what it's all about. Well, Andy, I... Sit down, son. I wants to tell you. So, let's see, how would be the best way to break it to you? Kingfish, what is you driving at? Andy, are you familiar with the old Aesop fable? The one about the two donkeys that was crossing the bridge in double harness? Well, while they was crossing, it seemed like one of the donkeys slipped. And for a while there, the other donkey managed to keep his companion from plunging into the raging torrents below. And then he seen that he, too, would be dragged down with his friend. So, Andy, that other donkey cut that harness and let his friend fall into the raging torrents below. Well, I feel sorry for the donkey, but what has all this got to do with me? Well, Andy, if one jackass to another, I think you better start taking swimming lessons. Kingfish, what is you driving at with these donkeys? Well, I ain't gonna beat about the brush. I'm gonna let you have it. Andy, the time has come for me and you. Oh, uh, excuse it, Andy. 
Misty likes you to see a lot, oh? This is Western Union. I have a telegram here from Mr. Andrew H. Brown at this address. All right, I'll take it. Have important position here in Rio de Janeiro. Starting salary, $250 a week. Strongly urge you take advantage of this opportunity. Come as soon as possible. Uncle Percival. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, who was that on the telephone, Gingrich? Uh, wrong number, Andy. Listen, <laughs> Gingrich, the way you've been acting lately, and now this story about the two donkeys letting each other drown, uh, is you referring that you don't want to see me no more or something? Oh, certainly not, Andy. I just told you that story in case you come across two donkeys on a bridge, you would know what it was all about. Oh, then you still like me, huh? Like you? Why, certainly I like you, Andy. But I never realized till a minute ago how all-powerful my affection was for you. You know, Andy, friendship is a great thing. It is, huh? Say, hey, Andy, I'll see for instance, if I come in this some good fortune, Naturally, I'd want to share it with you. And if you come into some good fortune, of course, you'd want to share it with me. I would. Now, see there, Andy? You said it yourself. Well, I'm glad it straightened out, because I was worried about the way you've been acting. Oh, no, no, Andy. Are we a pal for life? You know, thick and thin and all that stuff. Well, so long, Kingsley. Well, so long, Brother Andy. Hmm. And I think I almost let that donkey go down the drain. <laughs> yeah, Lightning brought it over from the lodge hall about an hour ago. Strongly urge you take advantage of this opportunity. Come as soon as possible, Uncle Principal. Oh, Andy, this is wonderful. This is really an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm going to go down there just as soon as I can make arrangements. Oh, boy. South America. Now, there's one place I have always wanted to go. Oh, they say it's a wonderful country, all right. <laughs> say, but the fare down there going to cost you about $500. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get the money out of the bank right now, and then i got to go over to see the Kingfish. Maybe he knows some good travel agent to help me out. Hey, Kingfish, I just got this telegram, and I wonder if you... <laughs> oh, uh, sit right down there, Brother Andy. Yeah, make yourself comfortable, son. Get your real first class passage down there, son. Leave everything to me. I'll take care of everything. Yeah, well, I got a lot of packing to do, King Chris, so I'll come back later this afternoon and pick up my boat ticket. Yeah, Andy, I'm gonna get you down there in style. Leave everything to me. Oh, yeah. See you later, King Chris. Well, goodbye, old pal. I beg pardon. <clears throat> May I place myself at your disposal? Excuse me for protruding, mister, but what was that we were going to place in the disposal? Oh, no, no. Uh, are you desirous of securing nautical transportation on one of our vessels? Yeah, uh, I'd like to get passage to Brazil, uh, for one. Brazil? Let me look here. Uh, we have the motor ship, Southern Cross, sailing on Tuesday. Let me take a glance at the chart. Yeah, give the thing a glance there. <laughs> well, we have a very nice outside stateroom on deck B. It is a bit off, though. Oh, dear. That one's gone. Oh, we have another. Good. On deck B also. It's eleven $1 hundred and ninety dollars. Of course, it is a bit forward. A bit forward? I think it's a wheel of a nerve. And on second glance, I think I'll try someplace else. Yeah, oh, dear, dear. <laughs> uh, 
très impossible, monsieur. Le, le bateau. Ah non, mais c'est dans le cadre, monsieur. Ah non, 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 je suis désolé, monsieur, mais nous ne pouvons rien faire. Nous ne pouvons pas changer euh, votre réservation. Le, 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 monsieur, vous ne pouvez pas faire ça. Moi, jamais de ma vie, je n'ai été traité de la sorte. J'exige que justice soit faite, monsieur. Ah, justice, justice, c'est ridicule. On ne peut rien faire, on ne peut rien faire. Voilà, monsieur, au revoir. Oh. How do you do there? Uh, oui. Et je vous aider, monsieur. Uh, me want a ticket to Brazil, uh, chop chop. Certainement, monsieur, certainement. Mais oui, mais oui, bien sûr, bien sûr. Et nous avons des notes excellents fret. Tu pars pour l'Amérique du Sud à midi, mercredi. Nous prenons 12 passagers et le prix est 690 dollars. Vous désirez, n'est-ce pas? Well, the only thing I know to part in the whole mess for that $690. And if it's all the same to you, I'll my wee myself on down the street. Au revoir. Two eighty, two ninety, ninety-five. There you will, three hundred dollars. Well, we sail Wednesday morning. Better have me here around four o'clock. Good. Mr. Brown. Little bit more. That's it. Now hold it steady. Now hold it still. Very still, Mr. Brown. Very still. Andy? Hi, Gangfish. <laughs> Mr. Brown, you moved. You spoiled the picture again. Well, Andy, here's your boot ticket. Uh, everything's in order. And it comes to exactly $499. And 80 cents. Uh, I've got me a cheese sandwich on the way back from the steamship company. I know we ain't gonna quibble about 20 cents. Oh, no. Hold it, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Now, just one more. Did you show this is a high-class ship? High-class? Why, Andy, the only reason this ship leave Greenpoint, Brooklyn at 4 o'clock in the morning is so it won't embarrass the Queen Mary. <laughs> well, tell me something. Look this way, please, Mr. Brown. Does you think I'm going to have a good time on board? Does you think I'm going to make any friends on the way down? Friends? Why, Andy, I can see you now, sitting out on the deck in the evening, uh, chewing your cud with the rest of the passengers. Oh, Andy, you're going to have a lovely time aboard. Yeah, that's fine. I want to rest up on the way down to Brazil, though. I got to get in a lot of sleep on the way down. Don't worry about that, Andy. This is one ship where everybody hits the hay early. <laughs> it could. Hitting the hay. Say, Kingfish, I know this sounds like a foolish question, but, uh... Hold it, Mr. Brown. Is this by any chance a cattle boat? That'll be all, Mr. Brown. I'll send the prince over as soon as they're ready. Yeah. Yeah, Andy, you're gonna have a lovely trip. Yes, sir. A wonderful trip, boy. Uh, Kingfish, you still ain't answered my question. Uh, what's that, old pal? Is I or is I not sitting on a cattle boat? Well, Andy, there might be a few cattle on there, but they're all genuine Aberdeen Angus's. You ain't gonna be mingled with no alley cows, you know. Oh, you're gonna have a wonderful trip, son, a wonderful trip. Kingfish, I ain't going on no cattle boat. Now, wait a minute, Andy. All the other boats was crowded, and that's the best what I could do. And anyway, Andy, think of the advantages of traveling on a cattle boat. Think of the fun, the amusement, and all the jolly games. What jolly games are you speaking of? Well, all the dead boats, Andy, uh, like uh, Blind Man Bull, pinning the tail on the heifer, and all that stuff. <laughs> well, I guess if I can't get no other passage, a cattle boat ain't too bad. Uh, but when do the boat sail? Well, uh, Wednesday night, Pair 57, Brooklyn. Yeah, but how are I gonna know which boat it is? Oh, that's very simple, Andy. When you get down to the dock, just follow your nose.
Well, I didn't put this down in the basement with the rest of the stuff. Oh, yeah, sir. Hi, you fellas. Uh, hi, Calhoun. Uh, uh, where's Andy? Well, I guess he home packing, Calhoun. You know, it's a wonderful break I had to get him. Going out there to join his uncle in Brazil. Lovely country, Brazil. Lovely country. Well, I wouldn't know, Calhoun. A fella told me that it gets kind of hot down there. Here, it says in the summertime, it gets up around 103 in the shade. Well, fella ain't gonna be crazy enough to sit in the shade, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, that's a marvelous country, Brazil. And at $250 a week, and they're gonna live like a king down there. Hmm, I hadn't given much thought to that. 250 bucks a week. And then he'll probably wind up inheriting uh, his uncle's plantation. Yeah, it's a wonderful opportunity for Andy. Yeah, a great opportunity. As a matter of fact, it's too good for him. Kingfish, I don't know what you got on your mind, but I can see them cucarachas shining in your eyes. Yeah, I could go down there and send for Sapphire Leela. Uh, I gotta do it. There's too great an opportunity to pass up. No, Kingfish, this time you is stuck. The only way you could get this job is if you had been at your bone, Andrew H. Brown. South America, take me away. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing about going away, Amos. I'm gonna miss all my friends, especially you. Yeah, well, I'm gonna miss you too, Andy. But I'm happy for you, because this is a great opportunity. Yeah, maybe when I get set, you and Ruby can come down and visit me. Thank you, Andy. Well, son, I want to say a lot of things, but I just can't think of anything to say. I guess all I can say is so long and take care of yourself. Yeah, so long, Amos. Uh, are you sure you don't want me to drive you over to the dock in the morning? Uh, no, no, Amos. Everything's taken care of. Well, so long again, Andy. And be sure it's right. Kingfish, uh, we had a bad connection. Well, Andy, <laughs> drop whatever you are doing and get over to the lodge hall as quick as you can. But, Kingfish, I'm packing. I don't care what you are doing. This is a matter of life or death, and make it snappy. All right, Kingfish, I'll be right over there. Well, now, explain to me again how... Uh, I was born George Stevens, and you was born Andrew H. Brown. Well, yeah, Andy, I was shot too when I got the letter here. It come by special delivery uh, this morning from our old hometown, Marietta, Georgia. Oh, me. This is a mess. Uh, what did the letter say, Kingby? Well, Andy, it say here, uh, Little Kingfish, this is to inform you that when you was a baby, I done mixed you up with another baby named Andy Brown. Uh, Axel, you was Andy Brown, and Andy Brown is you. I hope this mistake ain't inconvenience you. <laughs> and then it say here, uh, your faithful old family physician, Nearsighted Thompson, M.D. I is George Stevens, and you is Andy Brown. How could a doctor make a mistake like that? Well, Andy, I know you remember that we were born on the same farm on the same day. And in the confusion, the nearsighted doctor done got us mixed up. Oh, you read about it in the papers, Andy. It happened lots of times. Well, I know you're telling me the truth, Kingfish. You got your official truth right there in the letter. But I just can't get used to not being myself. Oh, it's gonna take a little time, Andy. Yeah. Well, I know I ain't myself, but uh, still feels like me. Well, now, Andy, as you've accepted that unfortunate error, 
Well, you can let me have my steamship ticket, and I'll get on down to South America. No, I can't disappoint uh, my dear old Uncle Percival. Uh, your Uncle Percival? But he sent a telegram to me. Now, look here, son. You are forgetting about nearsighted Thompson. You is George King Fitz Stevens, and I is Andy Brown. That telegram was sent to me. And if you figure on depriving me of my birthright, I'll slap an embargo on you. But, King, <laughs> I got something on going. Listen, Andy. What is right is right. And you ain't figuring on depriving me of my inheritance, doing me out of something that is rightfully mine. Andy, are you harboring thoughts like that? For shame. For shame. <laughs> Not like that. You as Andy Brown, the job is yours. I wish you a good trip and all that. Take good care of yourself. Well, so long, Kingfish. I'll drop your line from South America to let you know how I make it out. So long, Andy. So long. <laughs> uh, but, say, tell me one thing before you go. Well, what's that, old friend? When we were young fellas and uh, you were taking all them good-looking gals out to parties all the time, they was actual going out with uh, Andy Brown, huh? That right. Well, tell me something. What's that? What kind of a time did I have? Take it from me, son. Those were the happiest days of your life. and the kingfish turned out to be me, and I turned out to be him. Andy, what is you talking about? Kingfish is four years older than you is. You wasn't even born in the same town. Why, you was born in houses that was at least 12 miles apart. Holy mackerel. That doctor must have been more nearsighted than I thought he was. Andy, tell me one thing. Did you give the kingfish your ticket, and did he go down to South America to take that job with your uncle? Yeah, he's Andy Brown. I didn't want to deprive him of his birthright. Andy, this is nonsense. You is Andy Brown. You's always been Andy Brown. That was your job and you was gypped. Oh, me. Amos, give me a hand. I want to go in and lie down. <laughs> you to do is to wire your Uncle Percival and tell him what the kingfish did. No, Amos. There's been enough trouble already. I guess I'd just better forget the whole thing. Now, look, Andy, you can't take it this way. The thing for you to do is to... Where's that husband of mine? He didn't come home last night, and he left this note saying he was going away to make his fortune, and he'd send for me later. Sapphire, the kingfish done left for South America. America? Yeah, he done took my ticket and left for Brazil. I got a wire from Uncle Percival offering me a job down there at $250 a week. And the kingfish is going down there to jip me out of it. Oh, good. Oh, what's the matter? Yeah, what's the matter, Sapphire? I wanted to fix things so George wouldn't hang around with you and Andy Brown. Well, what happened? Well, Andy, the kingfish done left for South America. Oh, 